my name is Imad Alashi. Like Pratik said, I work for Insight. And um, let's go ahead. So Keda is stands for uh, Kubernetes-based event-driven auto scaling. It's a it's a an open source auto scaler that you can install on your Kubernetes cluster that helps you scale your uh, workloads uh, based on events that are outside of your cluster. So uh, the traditional uh, auto scaling within Kubernetes is specifically about um, the, 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 the auto scaler that's built in in, Keda, in, in Kubernetes uh, helps you scale your workloads based on um, resources that are being consumed within the cluster. So for example, if a pod is consuming a lot of CPU and uh, you know that you need to scale to another pod or two or three because your uh, workload is, in, uh, is in, uh, consuming a lot of the CPU of the pod, then this is where the built-in horizontal pod autoscaler come in and scale your uh, uh, workloads or deployments into more uh, deployments. Keda, however, comes in and it um, it adds more uh, to that beyond utilizing CPU and memory. So let's let's have a look. Uh, in a couple of uh, uh, slides about the details of how Kubernetes work uh, with autoscaling without scaling. So the way that this happens is that you have a, the Kubernetes controller. You, as the admin, deploy your uh, target. So uh, I'm using here the word target because this is what we are targeting as a deployment to, to scale up or to scale out, sorry. Uh, in, in most of the cases, this is something like um, a web app or, or any workload that you have in, in your cluster. Once you deploy it, you create something called horizontal pod autoscaler. This is a built-in in Kubernetes, an object that you, you create uh, in which you define the target. You, you, put the, you reference the target that you want to scale out. And you define the criteria on which you want to scale the workload. So, for example, um, utilizing 80% uh, of the CPU, I want to add more pods. If I go be a, be more memory, like 80% of the memory or this much of RAM, I want to scale my my workload. So we create this horizontal pod auto scaler, and then the Kubernetes controllers will be listening to such objects. Objects once these objects are created the controller will pick up these configurations or these references and then will start monitoring uh, the target now this is a very simple way of putting it start monitoring but there's there's a lot of inside in kubernetes happening to to capture these metrics of the resources then based on the consumption of the resources like we said in in the pod Kubernetes or the controllers scale uh, the workload or the deployment. Now, uh, like we said, this has uh, this is the, the vanilla that comes with uh, Kubernetes. However, there are some challenges with the built-in horizontal pod autoscaler. The first one is the the basic horizontal pod autoscaling uh, pod uh, autoscaling in Kubernetes. Re is focused on CPU and memory. This is by default. If you want to go beyond that, you will have to create something called a metric server. A metric server you, um, in the cluster that you have to define along with the, the controllers that will start reading metrics from external events. And this is like it, it, it's, it's going to require some some work for you to to do this. The other problem is that uh, there's no scaling from zero to one and one to zero. So it's either you have one pod of the deployment and you can scale to many and back to one, uh, but you will not be able to scale to zero and from zero to one. Sometimes you'd like this. You 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 want you want a zero workload in your cluster before you scale. 
So the the current or the horizontal pod auto scale built in does not provide you uh, with this um, functionality. Now this is where Keda comes. Keda provides uh, the following. First of all, it acts as a metric server for many scales. So uh, we have like at the time of writing the slide, there was more than twenty two um, uh, external scalers. Uh, and uh, this is where uh, Keda can uh, be your metric server to capture events happening outside to scale your workloads. Uh, one of the examples, or some of the examples that I put on this slide, you can see that you can listen to Kafka um, streams or Rabbit NQ uh, queues or Azure, uh, uh, whether it's Event Hub or uh, Service Bus or Redis streams. So, for example, if you have um, uh, a system that uh, is listening to Azure Service Bus, and you have in your Kubernetes workload, you have a deployment that listens to this service bus, uh, and then suddenly there's a spike on the uh, messages on the service bus, and you want to have so many pods that are consuming these messages, then this is where Keda comes in. With these built-in scalers, you can define the objects that we're going to talk about, you can configure Keda, and then it the, your, your deployments will scale based on how many messages in your queue, rather than waiting on your pod to consume a lot of CPU, and then you want to scale, which is going to be very late compared to listening to how many messages on the queue. The second thing it provides is that if, if none of these autoscalers uh, are enough for you, you can build your own scaler. You can have, uh, for example, uh, in one of the streams uh, on, on Twitch, when I, when I used to stream uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we created together with my with the people on the stream, we created a, an autoscaler that scales our deployments based on how many letters in the word kaboom uh, the one can send on the chat. So if someone said uh, on the chat, sent a message, said kaboom, and there was 10 O's in the word kaboom, uh, 10, 10 letters, uh, 10 O's in the, in the word kaboom, then we will scale to 10 pods in the cluster. Uh, this, of course, is, is just, just a joke to show uh, how Kubernetes, uh, so how, how Keda works. Uh, you, I don't think this is going to be useful uh, uh, scalar, but the idea is that you can you can build your own scalar if none of these um, common scalars uh, satisfy your needs. The last thing, of course, that you can also support from zero to one and one to zero. This is this is what Keda does uh, for you. So, uh, how does Keda really work behind the scenes? Uh, the first thing you have to do is to, of course, install Keda in. Uh, your cluster. You can use this uh, Helm charts that is provided by the team. You can use Helm install uh, Keda. The first thing, of course, uh, the second, of course, that you, you have to have a deployment. You have to have a target. You want to scale. You create that in your cluster. And then you create something called scaled object. This is something that is not built in, in Kubernetes. This is uh, uh, after you install uh, Keda, you will have a CRD in the cluster, and you can create objects out of that. It's called the scaled object. This scaled object is very similar to the definition of the horizontal pod autoscaler object that you create in the cluster, with, that with vanilla built in uh, Kubernetes. Uh, it will have a, a reference to the target that you want to uh, um, scale. It will have configurations, for example, uh, the, the connection strings or, or the properties that you have to have in order to connect to the queue. For example, in our example, we are listening to a message queue. Uh, you need a connection string to connect to that message queue and see how many messages you have. You put the information in this scaled object. Uh, and also how many uh, uh, pods you want pair message in the queue. So all of this information you put in the scale, scale object. Once you create the scaled object, okay, the operator will pick up this uh, the, the creation of such an object and will create a horizontal pod autoscaler. 
Now, this is a surprise, I guess, for many of you. Like, you would think, like, oh, creating a horizontal plot auto scalar Y. We thought that Kayla came to, to be its own scaling uh, method. Well, the the team behind Kayla, they, they knew that this means that they have to create a scheduler. Uh, and this is going to be insane to, to create a scheduler to that create pods on, the, on this map. So, uh, the best approach was to uh, jump on or use reuse the the built-in concepts in Kubernetes to to do this. So there's already a horizontal pod auto scaler and there's already a scheduler. We're just going to use that to achieve our goals. So the the operator, the care operator, will create a horizontal pod auto scaler and will put a lot of the information that we had in the scaled object in the horizontal horizontal pod auto scaler. Now remember that Kubernetes uh, built in uh, scales on CPU and memory, but it also supports what's called a metric server. We mentioned it at the beginning of the slides. Kedo will act as the metric server. So in, in, when it creates the horizontal pod auto scaler, it will say uh, for this target, you need to um, ask for the metric server, which is Kedo itself. So if you continue, uh, remember that there is zero, there's zero deploy, there's a deployment, but there's zero pods in the cluster. Get the operator using the built-in uh, scaler for message queue. It will listen to the queue based on the configurations in the scaled object. We'll see that yes, that we have messages, and according to the configuration, we have to have at least one pod of that deployment. So it will create that first one deployment, first one uh, pod. Once it creates it, then everything else is going back exactly the same for the horizontal pod auto scaler that is built in Kubernetes. Uh, the Kubernetes controller will ask the horizontal pod auto scaler uh, what's going on. Uh, the horizontal pod auto scaler, however, will say this is a, an external metric. So I don't, we're not going to listen to CPU or memory. So you better ask the metric server installed in Kubernetes and get that information from the metric server. So the controller will talk to Keda and say, all right, I have this information in the scale, horizontal put auto scaler that talks about external metric. Can you please get me the information or the, 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 the value that you want me to, to scale to? Keda will check the, queue again, or this is going to happen regularly, like a pulling period, in a pulling period, Keda will check the, the size of the message queue, and then will return it back to the controller. And the controller, based on that, will scale the target to, to many targets. So um, uh, at the end of the day, Keda will provide that integer, the, the, this is the metric value. How we interpret the metric value, this is goes back to the horizontal pod of the scale. Hi, I'm hoping... Ahmed. Yes. I've got a question. And yes. I'm using the mic access just to, to ask it. Um, what does the Kata operator actually spin up in terms of, of pods and stuff? Because, <clears throat> and where do they live? Because as mm. soon as you said that there's a message queue, can that message queue get run to multiple pods? How is that synchronized and so on? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I love these questions. Please keep them coming. Uh, I can't see the chat, really. I can't see the questions. All I can see is my slides. So uh, I'd, I'd love from Pratik or uh, Scott to bring this up. We, we, will, we will call them out. Awesome. Awesome. Now, the KEDA itself does not bring any queue. Uh, it does not deploy any queues. It does not uh, manage any queues. Uh, the queues are outside of the cluster. Look, imagine this is Azure uh, or Azure uh, a container uh, a message queue. All what Keda does, it connects to that queue and gets the, the metric value, like how many messages are in that queue. Oh, OK, so that's why when you're using like Redis or Kafka, that's an existing Kafka queue somewhere in the universe. 
all right, mm -hmm. which might be on your cluster, might not be, can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. long as yeah. you've got an endpoint that you can configure to read, to pop values off that queue, all right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, that makes That's perfect sense. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, awesome. So uh, this is um, this is how Keda works uh, in general. Now, uh, remember that Keda, uh, the Keda operator at this at this point is a metric server, so it retains a value to the Kubernetes controller, and this value uh, will determine how many target objects or, or, or pods we we need to scale to. Now, this is something is built in 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 the how the horizontal pod autoscaler in Kubernetes work. It's not something new or Keda brings. So Keda will not tell you how many pods it should uh, scale to. Keda just returns the metric value. And then the controllers, the Kubernetes controller will say, oh, OK, you need, this is, this is a value uh, uh, metric, or this is an average metric. Now, what's the difference between the two? Um, I'm just going to talk about the average metric, which is uh, what Keda uh, uses by default. Uh, let's imagine uh, that, or this is the, 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 the best statement I could have come up with to define it. So it's a uh, target metric value is the metric value for one replica. So, which means like how many, how many, for example, in, in our, our example, it's the messages. How many uh, pods uh, we want to create for the messages in the queue? So for for if for the number two, this means that for every two messages in the queue, we want to have one replica. If we want, if we have four, if we have, for example, ten messages, we are going to have five replicas. If we have eighteen. We're going to have nine. Yeah. So if, if, this is if the target value is two. This is for the average, average value. OK. So I'm going to say this again, because I know that I've said a lot of things. In your configuration, in the scope of you can say, I want the target value to be two. This means whatever metric value comes from the server or from Keda, for each two points, I want to have one replica. So if it was messages, this means that every two messages will have one, one pod. Okay. If if it was uh, wor the word uh, the letter uh, the number of letters uh, in kaboom, uh, if it's like f if we have configured to be five, for each five letters we're gonna have one. Okay. So how does the uh, this is now also part of Kubernetes. So how does Kubernetes uh, interpret this? So let's, for example, our target metric value is 2. This is part of the configuration. Okay, And we have one replica at the moment. And then Keda operator will keep checking the, the messages in the queue. Now imagine that we have checked and there's 10 messages. It will say, oh, OK, so we are going to have <clears throat> The number of replicas we want is 10 messages divided by 2, which equals 5. Now we have 1 replicas. Then I know that we have to scale to 5. We need to add more, 4 more replicas. OK? I hope this is clear. So this is, this is how the calculation works. So this, this formula, if you like, you can find it in the documentation of Kubernetes. So we are going to go with uh, the first demo, which is uh, Robert MQ Scaler. Uh, let's go uh, before we let's go in the details. Let's see what we have. So in the demo demo plan, we're going to have we're going to deploy Keda. Of course, uh, this is uh, if, 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 previously this is a a workshop that I, I did before. So I'm not going to deploy Keda. It's already deployed in my cluster. But you can install, you can easily like Helm install Keda. It's very easy from a repository. Uh, we are going to create a Robert MQ. The queue is already created in the cluster. We're not going to create that so to save time. Uh, we are going to deploy a Robert MQ uh, consumer. 
This is also deployed in the cluster, but this now this is we have explained that the Rabbit MQ consumer is um, imagine that uh, we are a ticketing system, and for each ticket that we receive, it's going to add a queue. Oh, sorry, add a message in the queue. The Rabbit MQ consumer uh, is uh, to process these uh, uh, messages and send an email uh, as a confirmation, for example. So this Rabbit MQ consumer will start pick up message and send the email, pick up a message and send the email. Of course, in our example, it does, doesn't do anything. It just waits. <laughs> but let's imagine it does that. By the way, this is also part of the uh, Keda uh, examples. So I'm not, uh, this is going to be very easy for you to go back and check how the demo works. Uh, and then we also are going to deploy a scaled object. The scaled object will uh, define in our cluster how we want to scale our Robot MQ consumer because we're going to have a lot of messages and we are going, if we're going to keep one pod in the cluster, it's going to take forever to, um, to send emails to all these tickets. So we want to scale our Robot MQ consumer to, to many consumers so we can pull many messages from the queue. All this configuration will be in the scaled object. And then we are going to deploy a Robert MQ publisher. The Robert MQ publisher is, or just for the sake of the demo, to uh, to to that's going to mimic a rush of messages, like a lot of people buying tickets, and there's a lot of messages in the message queue. The publisher will do that for us. And then we will see how the the, the scaling uh, happens and how many uh, pods will be added to the. Um, to the replica. All right, so this is the plan. If everything goes fine, you know the most. Uh, so it might fail in my face. Uh, let's see what we have here. So this is this is the uh, just, Yeah. Just before we kick off, um, yeah. there's two questions which I've just noticed. Yeah. One of them is: Is Kada idempotent handling duplicate scaling requests and FIFO, or does uh, that come down to the Kena, Kena consumer implementation. Uh, all right, can you repeat that once more? So is Kada idempotent and does it handle duplicate scaling requests uh, mm. in a FIFO queue or does it come down to the consumer implementation? Yeah. All right, so there, there is... Um... There's no consumer implementation at this point. Like there's, uh, you, you don't really define. Uh, you don't. You, you, it's not imperative. It's not imperative. You don't say scale now, scale down, scale up, scale. You don't do. It's a desired state, and the desired state um, is, is the, the Keda will only return the metric value to to the horizontal pod autoscaler, and then the horizontal pod autoscaler in Kubernetes will take care of that. How does it take care of that? The horizontal pod autoscaler? It's a desired state, like I said. So if it depends on how uh, the polling period uh, of the metric value, Kubernetes will check. Uh, oh, okay, uh, it seems that we have new value. Let's scale out. Oh, we have a new value. Let's scale out more. We have a new value. Let's scale down now. So this, the the configuration of the polling period. And also the cool down period, which is going to, we're going to talk about later, and uh, some of the cool down window, which is all going to be only confusing, you know. Uh, with these configurations together, uh, Kubernetes will handle all these that look like contradictory uh, results. So from from uh, so it's it's don't think about item potency. It's like desired state, and Kubernetes will handle that for you. I hope this. Answer the question. Does that answer your question, Jackson? And he's just posted in the chat. He says, beautiful. He's got another question there as well. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion or, or what do you think of similar implementations uh, on top of a PaaS, such as Fargate or Virtual Node in Azure? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure about Fargate. But if you're referring to virtual node, um, I, I am aware of another terminology. I'm not sure if this is the same thing where we're talking about um, virtual kubelet, uh, I, which is, I think it's the same thing. I think virtual node uses virtual kubelet. 
uh, behind it the goes. scenes. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Keda, one one of the power power uh, uh, powerful thing that you can do with Keda is that you can you can put it on cluster like AKS. Uh, and configure the cluster you to use virtual kubelet uh, with Azure Container instances, and you can use Keda to uh, with with the node selector. You can say for for this scaling, I want the new scaled uh, scaled objects to be on this node. You can do this with the, with the node selector. Once you do that, uh, if you if you suddenly scale beyond the capacity of the cluster. Uh, you will be able to utilize the power of the cloud and a, a lot of Azure Container instances that is uh, stored in the, or like, uh, of course, it's distributed in virtual nodes all behind, but it's to you, to your cluster, it's a single node. And you can be able to, you will be able to scale to uh, uh, imaginary to unlimited <laughs> number of, uh, of, of pods. Of course, however, this is going to cost you a lot of money. <laughs> So be, be careful uh, about. So in, in, in the scale, the scale object you always define a ma maximum replicas uh, for for your. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Thanks, man. I'm sorry. Come on. No, 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 absolutely not. It's it's, uh, it's beautiful to have its uh, conversation. So keep it coming. All right. So um, to the demo. Uh, let me open before we go to the demo. Let me, oh, sorry, before we go to the cluster, um, I want to show you the uh, consumer. So this is this is the manifest uh, that we are going to use to um, uh, in in our sorry in our demo. So I'm I'm gonna just keep this secret uh, to the last. Just bear with me. So we have we have our deployment. So if you look here, this bit is where we define our robot MQ consumer. This is the in, in your in your case, it's gonna be the, the pod you want to scale. In our case, it's the pod that we want to scale, that one that consumes the messages. Okay. Um, you can see that here it's um, um, the arguments to the to the message queue that we are going to pull the message from and then we have at the bottom here the scaled object the scaled object is uh, the object that we define how we want to scale our uh, consumer uh, and all the configurations that is required so in our uh, things that I want to bring your attention to, it's a scaled object. Uh, the scale target reference we want to um, scale. Uh, the polling and interval for uh, how um, like um, how often should we um, pull the information from the message queue? See how many messages they have. Uh, the cool down period. Uh, the maximum replica count. This is we, we don't want to go beyond 30 replica counts, regardless of that formula that we had before. We're not going to go beyond, beyond 30. Now this bit is what, how, or on what basis do we want to scale our object? So in our case here, we are saying that the trigger is a Robert MQ uh, scaler. This can be Kafka, this can be Azure uh, message queues or message, message bus. Uh, the queue name, this is as parameters to, to this scalar. Uh, the queue name we're listening to. The queue length, the queue length in our case is the target reference. So we are saying for each five messages in the queue, we want to have one replica. If we have more, we're gonna uh, um, scale more. Now, this bit is interesting, which is the authentication reference. The authentication reference is an object below, yeah, uh, where we have the, um, uh, the parameters for the scalar uh, to connect to the cluster. The, sorry, to, to connect to the message queue, okay? 
Uh, this inf why in earlier versions in Keda, the, the secrets were hosted in the scaled object definition, but then there was a need for like it has to be a secret, it has to be referenced by different scalars, it has to. So they created a new object called trigger authentication. Uh, it, uh, it will use the information in the secret that's called RabbitMQ consumer secret. And we are going to use the uh, key called RabbitMQ host in the secret to use it as the host parameter for the RabbitMQ uh, uh, scalar. So this, this is a mouthful. But you don't have to know this in details at the moment. Just think that this is where we keep the information or the connection string information to connect to Robert MQ message. Cool. Which brings us up to the top, the secret that we have for the information how to connect to the cluster. All right. So uh, in a nutshell, we have deployment. We have a scaled object that defines how we're going to scale and the secrets that's going to help us connect to the robot MQ cluster. On the other hand, we have the publisher. This is just a container job that uh, creates a lot of messages in our message queue. All right, so what should we do now? We uh, need to uh, make sure that we don't have our job. So I'm sure that I deleted the job before. OK, by the way, this is uh, a uh, tool called K9S. I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> like I, I know K, K is for Kubernetes. I know why nine, but it's really like it adds something really. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, Imad, there's a question that's come in from Shah. Yeah. Is the trigger authentication cached? Like, for example, the AWS STS token cached or each time, like has a new token requested? So is, it, is that trigger authentication cached? Look, uh, the, the trigger authentication uh, references uh, a secret. Uh, the secret, there's many ways how to, you can refresh a secret. I don't know, I don't know how, like if, if, you, if you create a scaled object with this trigger authentication and it uses that secret, what if that secret changes? I'm not 100% sure really. Uh, I'm hoping that uh the keda scalar um once it finds that the connection or the secret has changed it picks it up, picks it up i'm not sure if there's a listener of this um but i'm hoping i'm hoping that it works that way uh, i have to get back for you on this one i'm not sure i know the answer so sean if you are willing to play with that and come back and do a talk about it that would be awesome Yes, yes. I don't know if you can see my video, but I'm giving two thumbs up for this. All right. Cool. Any more questions? Continue. All right. So um, let's see uh, the deployments that we have. I have already have deployed the RobotMQ consumer and the scaled object. You can see here that we have zero replicas. Yeah, we don't have one, we have zero. Nothing is wrong. So if I check the pods, there's um, uh, th this this RobotMQ, you can see here is the RobotMQ queue <laughs> because we didn't want to demonstrate something on Azure. So we for the consumer one, we don't have anything, okay? Uh, let's check the scaled object. Scaled object, oh, scaled object, and you can see here the scaled object that we have created before. It's exactly the same YAML that I have uh, put before. All right. Now, what we want to do, if we focus on the deployment and we keep an eye on the RobotQ MQ consumer, yeah, uh, I'm going to just, yeah, this one. I can't use the highlighter because this is a, almost a screenshot, so I'm going to remove this. Just keep an eye there. And then we go to our, oh, we go to our uh, manifests here, and I want to deploy the job. So once I say kubectl, let me just do this, kubectl apply, yeah. I have an alias for kubectl for k. 
we are going to deploy the publisher. This will mimic a lot of messages created on the message queue. Once we hit it and go back, I'll keep an eye here. I'm hoping that, ah, see? Now you can see it's from zero to one. This is the, the KEDA operator does this. The, the horizontal pod order scalar did not do this. This is KEDA doing this from one to, from zero to one. Now it's one. Uh, the KEDA operator created the horizontal pod auto scalar. And Kubernetes now will pick up the horizontal pod auto scalar object and will say, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to ask for the metrics. So it's going to talk to KEDA operator, say, Give me the metrics for the custom metrics for this uh, um, scaled object or the horizontal photo scaler. The uh, the KEDA will talk to will check the the queue with this uh, connection. We'll check how many messages there is, and we'll uh, start scaling the uh, consumer based on the messages. Now we have a lot of messages. We should we should see the Rabbit MQ consumer going up now. You can see now it's uh, four instances now. And uh, you'll see uh, in a minute as well, it's going to jump to eight. And then uh, I probably, I think it's not going to reach the maximum, which we had 10, uh, because the messages will finish. And you'll see this trickle down to zero. Now you'll also notice that it jumps it jumped in uh, double, so it was it jumped to one behind the scenes. It, be, it became two, but uh, it, the scale scaled faster than that. Before we see it in the refresh, it then became four, and if we are lucky enough, we'll see it to jump to eight. This pace uh, growing up or scaling up, uh, scaling uh, uh, up in the numbers and scaling down. Uh, this uh, you can control it. You can say I want double the, the pods every this seconds, or I can I want uh, in scaling down I want to uh, fifty percent of the of the deployment. So you can hear, see here that it jumped it jumped to eight. So Imad, if you <clears throat> so it sounds highly configurable from a scaling perspective. Mm -hmm. Are the defaults sensible? Uh, I look with with uh, with scaling specifically. I don't think you can call anything sensible <laughs> because uh, the use cases can vary greatly. There's a, there's a lot of use cases that you can have millions of messages and you have to just scale crazily, cr yep. crazy. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it just it's, it makes sense to just wait an hour before you scale down. Or so I, I advise that when you use this. Always, always measure, measure that it makes sense for your case, and then continue, continue this. So, without mentioning customers or, or going into detail, what are some of the real world uses of this that you've seen? Yeah, because I'm thinking ticketing systems. You know, like what's something that you've seen that is, I imagine, universities during O week or anything that involves a mass of registrations. Black Friday, whatever, right? What's some real world uses you've seen? You 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 answered me. This is this is exactly the use cases. Um, you you the the use cases you mentioned are are things of, uh, that most of the time use uh, queue messages, and this is where I see that ninety percent of the time, data okay, will be helpful. Uh, scaling based on on queues, or or service buses. This is ninety percent of the time I see it. But maybe at towards the end of the session, I can show you, um, I can show you um, uh, uh, scalars built-in scalars, where it's not it's not message queues. Um, I think there's there's things about, for example, S3 buckets. Uh, sometimes the, the in use cases where you have uh, you want you want image processor, and once an image is deployed in S3 bucket, for example, you want to Make a create a thumbnail of it. Imagine that uh, this is uh, S3 bucket is open for a lot of consumers who can who want this. So they start throwing a lot of images, and you want to scale your cluster or your cluster your pods based on how many images. So it's it's uh, it's not just queues, uh, but ninety percent of the time I feel like queues is going to be it. Um. 
Ah, good, thanks. That's cool. Awesome. All right. So you, we can see now that the, the, the messages have finished and Robert Q Consumer went back to zero. Now let's go back to uh, the slides. Now um, it seems like we are going behind time. So I'm going to uh, be careful on what we are targeting. So uh, how much time do we have? Do we are we going to finish exactly in nine minutes? You can go over, man. It's fine. OK, let's, let's see how we go. Let's see how we go. All right, so that was the built-in scaler for Robert MQ. Now, sometimes, like we said, you need an external scaler that is not part of the built-in scalers. Uh, things will uh, change a little bit more. So in, in this example, you will create a target, and you will create a scaled object. Uh, Kubernetes, uh, the code operator, will uh, monitor, monitor the scaled object, uh, and will create a horizontal put of a scalar. But then it will ask, or it will get the metrics from your scalar. So the, the my scalar square, it should have been part of the animation uh, early on because you deploy this manually in your, uh, like you, you create your own manifest and you create it in your cluster. So it sits, uh, it sits there waiting for you. Uh, and then uh, the, your scaled object will have the configurations to connect to your scalar or my scalar through gRPC. So this this connection between Keda operator and gRPC, it's a contract. Uh, we'll go through it in a minute. Uh, your scaler needs to implement that contract uh, to allow Keda to pull the metrics from. Uh, my scaler in this in, in my example, like I said before, it was a, a, a scaler that checks the chat of uh, Twitch uh, messages and brings the word kaboom and uh, um, calculates it. Your scale, you can go crazy what, you, what what you want to do in my scaler. Yeah, as long as you commit to the contract of uh, KEDA for external scalars in, in gRPC. And then everything else after this is exactly the same. The only bit that is different is this part where you have your own scalar to do, uh, to, to, give, to, pro to provide the values for KEDA. Uh, all right, so the demo number two, um, I'm going to just show you. I'm not going to, I think, run it. Um, or maybe I can, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll create, uh, cl clean up the last demo. We're not going to clean the last demo. <laughs> We're going to create the target deployment. We already created it. We're going to create the external scaler. We already did. We're going to deploy the external scaler. We already did. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Sorry for this. Uh, and we are going to create a mock server to, to just represent some values um, that we can, like, Pulling, pulling the Twitch, for example, and create the scaled object and observe it scaling. Uh, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna run this very quickly. Uh, I'm just going to show you the contract, the proto. This is this is what you have to adhere to in your uh, scale. Uh, sorry, in your um, custom scaler. This is the service. Uh, is active a method that you should provide to uh, to let um, Keda know that you are active uh, and you you are still listening to the to the metric. Uh, stream is active. You don't really need to care of this. Uh, uh, it's just uh, exactly the same as is active. But if you are streaming to Keda, like uh, pushing the values rather than pulling, uh, the Git metric spec you have to define. Uh, uh, the the target value, like it, it, you pull the information from the scaled object, the configuration, and you build, uh, uh, re you retain the target value you want. For example, number two, uh, like in our example, to uh, yeah, for two messages you want to have one one replica, and get metrics will be pulled periodically to to retain the uh, metric value, the metric value. In in Robert MQ, it retains the number of the messages. In your example, you can retain the number of O's in the world cable. Yeah, uh, you have this contract, and then uh, we have the implementation itself. You can here see in in the Git metrics 
uh, I'm just going to show you the Git metrics example where uh, I'm just connecting to an HTTP endpoint and asking uh, asking for the results. All right. Uh, based on that, I'm just returning the result here. And the, the, the scalar or, or Kubernetes will scale based on this value. Here you can go crazy. You can you can connect to to Twitch, like I said. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the slides. If you are interested in this, uh, just for the sake of time, I can walk you through. Like I can have one-to-one um, -one session if you like. We can do another session. Maybe we can in the next meetup. I'll be very happy to have this conversation. I uh, enjoy it. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to see this. I'm going to throw, go through the remainder of the slides. If you somehow have some time, maybe you can come back to this one. Uh, You're fine. Cool just, just, there's, a, there's a question from Manju. Yeah. He, he asks, can a combination of data points be used to trigger auto-scaling? For example, can messages pile up, uh, can be for some other reason, and may need analysis. So can we use a of data mm. points to trigger that auto scaling? All right, so if, if I'm gonna uh, paraphrase your question to make sure I understand, uh, to, to make sure that I understand. Um, you want to scale your uh, scale, uh, scales, uh, replica set based on multiple criteria and not just one. You probably are thinking of creating two scaled objects, one about the messages in a queue and one of maybe another message in another queue or, yeah. Is that right, Manju? Is that right, Manju? I'm just waiting for him to respond. Yeah. Just talk, Let talk me answer this. Yeah. If, it, if it's, that's the case, then uh, the, I think the advice is not to create multiple scaled objects uh, or horizontal pod auto scalers for the same workload sometimes because it, it, it will end up <laughs> with with complexity. However, you can create your 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 custom auto scaler, and you can use the right formulas for yourself. Like if you, if your messages are greater than something else uh, in another queue, you can you can retain the, the right value. For instance, you can do this logic with your code rather than confuse Kubernetes and create multiple scale objects for the, for the same uh, deployment. However, uh, in 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 most cases, it's it's advice I think to just avoid having multiple horizontal pod scales for the same deployment. I hope this answered the question. I think it did. Thank you. Great, no worries. Uh, the cooldown period, uh, from my experience, uh, it, it's noticed that uh, you uh, uh, you have to fall back to the Kubernetes built-in cooldown period. Uh, sometimes it takes a lot of time to cool down. Uh, so um, I'm going to show you at the end of the slides how you do this. But all, a cool down period in the Kubernetes scaled objects for Keda is a little bit different from the one that is for the built-in horizontal, horizontal pod auto scaler in Kubernetes. Trigger authentication we already talked about. It also supports managed identity if you are using Azure. Um, so you don't have to. Um, just use, use, use secrets. Uh, this is the example where you have Azure pod, uh, identity. You say the provider is Azure. Uh, changes in 2.0. This is this uh, this is where um, because the, it's been it's been there some for some time and this uh, uh, supposed to be like changes in 2.0. Uh, but it's this is where it's very cool that you can pass you can pass the behavior from the scaled object to the horizontal pod autoscaler. So if you grab this bit here and you put it in the scaled object, when you create the scaled object, this, this logic is very specific to the horizontal pod autoscaler bit in, in Kubernetes. So Keda will just grab it as is and put it in the horizontal pod autoscaler and it will uh, do that for you. And like I said, this is, uh, this is the scaled down logic for the policy. Like for example, you want uh, you want for every every 15 seconds you want to double up your um, your values. Yeah, you can see here scale scale down. Sorry, this is scale down uh, in the policy. 
every 15 seconds I want to go half because it's one percent yeah 100 uh, percent and but within 300 seconds use the highest value don't don't if, if it's the flaps up and down use the highest value within 300 seconds uh, scale up on the other hand uh, you can to use two policies the, the, the highest of which so you can uh, either uh, increase the, po the the pods based on percentage like every 15 seconds I want to double up or I want if, if every 15 seconds I want to add four pods rather than 100% of the existing ones. I think the, it, it picks the, the highest one. So this is the uh, uh, horizontal put of scalar scaling behavior. Uh, external push scalars, and this is something like, um, it's not, It's I think it's beyond our scope for today, but you can, you can push, uh, you can create scalars that push values to the keda uh, with a single connection rather than uh, uh, making keda uh, pull every once in a while i think this is it this was a little bit of a marathon i squeezed workshops into one presentation uh there's a lot of references there in the slides um uh, i think you let me see if yeah uh this is, one, this is the last slide really um i think if you if you go to my github no let me do this right now. Uh, let me do this. Uh, I think it's a GitHub uh, Keda workshop. If you go to this link, you will find uh, more information about this. I'm going to put this in the chat. All right. I think this is it for me today. And I'll give it, leave it back to Scott and Pratik for if, the, if anyone has any questions or comments. So there's another quick couple of questions in the um, chat. The last two there, um, which Tony has answered. Thank you. Um, just thoughts on OpenShift, Rancher, Tanzu. Have you used Keda on any of those? Uh, I can't really say. Uh, I'm not specifically like. I don't think. Uh, I don't have a good answer for this. I haven't used Keda on these uh, uh, schedulers. Oh, sorry, uh, orchestrators. Mm. Uh, I know that they use Kubernetes uh, concepts behind the scenes, but I can't say uh, that I've tried it. So I'm not. Okay. No, that's good. So, dude, thank you so much for the chat. Um, it was actually very informative and I'm thinking of dusting off I'm thinking of dusting off some of my um, my old Redis code and trying it out right nice nice I can see that Tony uh, put a link to uh, give a core on OpenShift so this is a good answer yeah so that's good for OpenShift right so thank you very very much um, I don't know what everyone else thought, but I certainly thought it was really good. Oh, I should stop recording. Oh.